there everybody, how's it going? I just wanted to do a quick video going over what I consider to be the pros and cons uh, for a career in sonography. Now, I'm pretty sure there's many pros and cons to any career, including sonography. And we can, or I can make a video that's very long, but I chose to just choose five pros and five cons at random that came to my mind. I wrote it down on my phone. All right, first pro would be creativity. Now, this is a healthcare career. Uh, healthcare's careers are based in science. So you wouldn't think creativity really has much to do with it. You're not painting, you're not creating music, you're not doing art, acting, any of those things. But much like photography, sonography is an art. You have to create images. You're taking images of people's internal anatomy and pathology, and you can take crappy images or you can take really amazing images. Obviously, it also has to do with patients as well. That's something to consider. And I think taking pride in your images and taking pride in how well they can come out. I know not on all patients. I hear that excuse a lot that, oh, the patient was not good. Uh, body habit is not good. And that's the reality. And unfortunately, in some adult hospitals, that's a lot. That's a very common occurrence where you get a lot of patients who might have have morbid obesity and you can't get great, great images, and that's understandable. But that shouldn't be an excuse or a crutch. You should at least try, and ultimately, if you can't get a great image, that's what's gonna happen. But I think the career can be very creative. Uh, you can create some beautiful images. So obviously, we take pride in the, uh, the aesthetic qualities of our images. So that's one thing to consider. Uh, number two, which probably should be number one, but number two is helping people. I mean, most people will tell you they go into healthcare to help people. I mean, that's the most common thing I can think about. Uh, if you didn't want to help people, you wouldn't want to work in a service industry like healthcare because you're literally working with people and helping them in some cases, the worst times of their life. So you're going to get, if you get great pleasure from helping people, healthcare will be a great choice for you. Uh, just one story off the top of my head. I remember scanning a young, a young kid, you know, 11, 12, who came to the ER uh, for a swelling. You know, they did an ultrasound and they said, oh, it's a lymph node. You'll be fine. Some antibiotics. But a few days later, mom came back because the swelling had gotten worse and he was in a lot of pain. So they ordered another ultrasound and I did the ultrasound and I was like, hmm, that doesn't look like a lymph node. It looks like it's you know, within the jaw, within the mandible, where you see the plane of the mandibular bone, then all of a sudden the contour of the bone changes. And this thing that did kind of look like a lymph node, but was a hypoechoic mass, was within the mandible. So, you know, I was like, this is not a lymph node, this is a lesion. I mean, obviously ultrasound's not going to tell you what type of tumor it is, but it was definitely a tumor. And uh, luckily, instead of just going by, by the prior exam and saying, oh, it's just a lymph node, Whatever, I, I called the radiologist and said, hey, this, does, this doesn't look good. It looks like a mass. Because I think they came out as an outpatient the second time. So I told the radiologist, this doesn't look good. Um, can you maybe recommend some further imaging from the doctors that they can maybe do now before they go home and have to come back another day? So that same day they did a CT. It confirmed it was a tumor. You know, biopsies later turned out it was a rhabdomyosarcoma. Uh, he went to a cancer center and got good, great care. And oddly enough, or not really oddly enough, but uh, many months later, I actually ran into the mother. I didn't recognize her, but she recognized me. And she gave me a big hug. She was crying. She told me the whole story, everything the kid was doing, all his treatments, how he had lost his hair. And just, it was very emotional. And it was, I was proud to have helped them at that moment. You know, obviously, they would have eventually, hopefully, gotten the right diagnosis over time. But I'm happy that I was able to get them that, that diagnosis a lot faster so they can get treatment a lot sooner. You know, with things like cancer, the faster you start treatment, the better. So that's just one story. But there's many. I've been doing ultrasound for about 16 years. And there's many, many stories like that that really, even on a real bad day or a bad week or a bad month, you're just like, wow, this is why I do this for. Okay, so the next pro is work schedule work-life balance, uh, specialty flexibility, works uh, flexibility. Like in ultrasound, you can work in a hospital. 
You can work in an outpatient center. You can work in a specialty clinic. You can work for a mobile ultrasound unit. There's many, many different areas that you can work. That's one thing. You could also work in many specialties. If you want to just focus on the heart, you can become an echocardiographer. If you just want to do OB sonography, which a lot of people start wanting to do, I hear that from a lot of uh, young female students who say, oh, I just don't want to do OB. I don't want to learn anything else. You know, you have to learn everything else. But they just want to focus on obstetrics and gynecology. And that's fine. I actually like obstetrics and gynecology. I worked in high-risk OB for, for a while, and it's uh, very interesting. Um, I personally right now work in pediatrics, and I never even wanted to work in pediatrics. If you would have asked me when I started out, oh, do you want to work in a pediatric hospital? I would have been like, hmm, absolutely not. Not with children that cry and scream. But that's where I ended up, and I love it. Um, work uh, life balance. You can work many different types of shifts. You can work 12 hours, three twelves. You can work 10 hours, four tens. You can work five days a week, just like regular banker's hours, nine to five, uh, eight to four, seven to three. You work the night shift. You work the midday shift from three to 11 p.m. There's a lot of different shifts. So there's a lot of flexibility there, all right? And place, uh, I mean, you can work, if you're a registered diagnostic medical sonographer, you can work anywhere in the United States. So if you want to move from state to state, you don't have to get a state license just with your national ultrasound registry. You can work anywhere. I'm pretty sure it's different across uh, the world. Some countries don't really use sonographers because maybe their uh, their healthcare system isn't as developed. Maybe uh, I know a lot of countries, the doctors do the ultrasounds themselves. And then there's other countries where they use ultra, uh, sonographers a lot, like the United States. Um, I know in other countries, I think in uh, Britain and Australia, I could be wrong. But if anybody out there is from you know, the UK, or Australia, I think they write their own reports. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I've heard this before, and I think that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's that's a very good pro, uh, work flexibility. On to the next one, which is very important in a lot of people's minds, mine as well, pay. Unfortunately, we live in a world where you need money, and you want to make money for what you're doing. I mean, we've, we place value on money, so if we get more money, we feel like we're being valued more. I'm pretty sure there's some state parts of the United States where people feel they, they might not get paid enough, but perhaps the cost of living is not as high as, as, as in bigger cities. Um, but I believe the pay is, is, is pretty good. I've been doing ultrasound for about 16 years or a little more, maybe 17, and I get paid decent. Uh, could I get paid more? Of course, I'm not going to say no to that. But, you know, it, it is a very, it is a pretty good paying profession i think so um so that's something to consider in most instances you're going to be getting paid uh bi-weekly especially if you work for a hospital uh, but most places do pay bi-weekly so your checks will be bigger than if you got paid weekly uh then there's call that's something to consider too that i didn't mention with the work-life balance pro is that might be a negative for some people some people don't want to take call but there's people that do want to make more money and they want to take call and that's going to increase your your income i i did not call but i helped in an outpatient center an urgent care center for a whole year and i did two days uh four hours each day that was eight hours extra a week from what i worked and that year i cleared six figures so there's potential to make money i know people people who make six figures but they also work a lot of hours they work three jobs and that's that's not the life for me. I don't want to be working 24-7 either. Just to say I make six figures, you know, in a year. It's just not that important to me. But that's that's just something to consider. The, number, the fifth pro that I listed was expertise in a field. It feels good to know that you know a lot of a very specific subject. I like to know a lot of things about a lot of things. I love music. I love recording music and writing songs and making music. I love editing videos and using video editing software. I like learning about history. I like learning about geography. I just like learning about everything. But I can't know everything there is to know about everything. But I do know a lot of one specific subject, and that's ultrasound. And there's always room to learn more. You can't learn it all. You can work in ultrasound your entire life, and there's going to be things you, don't, you haven't learned yet, things you haven't seen yet, and things to learn. I still th see things that I've never seen before. You know, I had a case of Takayasu's arteritis. I'd never seen that before. Some people work their entire career and they never see it. 
other people's work their entire career and they see it a few times, but very few. Uh, I also saw a case of um, ventricular diverticulum, which I shared on the on the Instagram. And that was amazing, especially because nobody else knew what it was, including myself. But here we have this premature infant, not even premature. I think it was a full term infant with a pulsatile mass in the abdomen. They did an entire echo, pediatric echo, congenital pediatric echo. They didn't see anything. So they ordered an ultrasound to see, you know, maybe this thing was connected to the umbilicus. So I went with that in mind. Oh, maybe there's, uh, you know, some something patent, like a patent ductus venosus or something like that. So when I went to do it, I get there, I see the mass is pulsus, pulsus. I was like, hmm, what the hell is that? So I start scanning and I'm seeing it. It fills with color and I'm following it up. And to me, I was like, wow, this looks like it goes into the heart. What is this? You know, I was like, it almost looks like an aneurysm. Or something like that, you know? But I was like, why would this kid have an aneurysm of the, of the ventricle? And why would the aneurysm go so far down? It went all the way down. Well, I took my images. I took tons of images, cine clips to really uh, represent what I was looking at uh, good. And then I went back down. The first thing I did is I hit up Google. Put my findings. Found the answer immediately. I read the articles it was verbatim to what I was, I was finding. So I had my answer. I showed it to the, the radiologist, which is the nighttime. So this is a fellow and it was actually her first call. And she was like, really? On my first night of call, this is what's gonna happen? Something that's this crazy? And so I went over with her. I showed her the, the articles and you know she agreed. She took a long time to read it, but she agreed. The funny thing is the actually the ordering physicians, they kind of looked at me like, hmm, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Cause I was like, Hey, I showed them, hey, this is what I'm seeing. This is connected to the heart. It looks like a like an aneurysmal dilatation of the left ventricle going into the out past the sternum into the superficial structures of the abdomen. And the guy was like, he totally brushed me off. I was like, all right, whatever. That's cool. But they did a CT. Uh, they also did a, um, a cardiac, um, pediatric cardiac CT, which showed that. And then surgery also confirmed it, but they already had it confirmed from the CT. So that was a big win, you know, and I like wins for ultrasound. What can I say? Uh, so, so yeah, expertise in the field. I mean, it feels good. It feels good to know that, you know, a lot about one thing that many, many people don't. I mean, God, the entire, almost the entire population thinks that ultrasound is just obstetrics. That's why we get that joke every time that, Oh, is it a boy or a girl? Regardless, you'll be scanning their gallbladder. Haha, is it a boy or a girl? You're doing a Venus Doppler. Haha, it's a boy or a girl. They think they're being super clever because they don't know, but we've heard the joke thousands of times so we're like <laughs> you know they really do not know just the other day i had a kid with for an appendix and he's like why are you doing this to me teenager and i'm like we do ultrasounds of everything you know, pretty much anything that's soft tissue in the human body and he's like oh i thought it was only for babies and i hear that all the time too so obviously we have a lot of expertise either in our specialties or a broader and just a broader ultrasound specialty itself that a lot of people don't possess and I think that's that's pretty cool.